Hello again, Mitchell Sigman for Acoustica Zeros and Ones blog. In today's installment, we're going to talk about Acoustica's new nightlife virtual instrument. Now, instead of taking you on a tour through every single nook and cranny of it, um, I'm going to just show you some of the cool, nifty things that make it different from other virtual instruments. Uh, it has a relatively standard uh, oscillator to filter to amplifier controlled by envelope generators architecture, but there are some unique tricks it has up its sleeve and I'm gonna show you some of those. Uh, we'll have a couple videos, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the oscillators, and in an upcoming video, we'll talk about some of the neat filter tricks it has, and then in another video, we'll talk about the modulation sequencers. So let's talk about the oscillators. So over here in the middle at the bottom, we have the oscillator section of Nightlife, and it actually has three oscillators. You can see oscillator one, two, three, and the controls you see here are the controls for just one of the oscillators. We're on oscillator one right now. And you have little tabs up here to go to the other oscillators. These are actually turned off, and you can turn them on here with the on-off button. So for now, I'm just going to leave oscillator one turned on and click on it up here to select it. You can see it sort of lights up over here. And the first thing I want to talk about are the available waveforms. Now, most standard analog synths typically have uh, just a couple of waveforms, uh, usually a uh, sawtooth wave, which looks like that or a uh, square wave and usually these are variable width they call that pulse width and that's usually about it sometimes you get a triangle wave as well which is that guy right there but in nightlife we have a ton of waveforms available you get the standard analog type waveforms but if we turn this knob you can see we're flying through all these different waves so And these can potentially be a lot more harmonically complex than the standard analog type waveforms you're used to, so that is really neat. And Nightlife also has another great feature in the oscillators where you can literally draw on these waveforms by just clicking the mouse in here. And you can see that the mouse cursor turns into a finger, and that's why. So, so let me go back to the sine wave over here, and as soon as I click my finger in there, suddenly we're making our own waveform. Now there's no real science to this, you just sort of move the mouse around and move the finger until you hear something you like. But it's a very sonically powerful way to modify things very quickly and easily. Next I want to talk about this knob over here, which is PWM, which is short for Pulse Width Modulation. Now in analog synthesizer world, this almost always applies to a wave like this, a square wave. And as we turn the knob, it makes this wave get thinner and thicker, which corresponds to the sound getting thinner and thicker. Now, what's unique about Nightlife's implementation of pulse width modulation, that's a lot of words to say, um, is that uh, it actually sort of morphs any waveform into uh, the pulse width mod sound you're used to hearing. So in other words, it'll morph over. All right, let's go to a really complex digital wave. And this can be a pretty useful sound because you can modulate between these. In other words, you can modulate the pulse width modulation knob. And I've already set up this modulation routing up here in the matrix. You see I've got LFO1 over here, and that's controlling pulse width modulation 1 of this oscillator. So if I turn up the knob over here, and I turn up this control here, let me slow it down a little bit. if I change the waveform to something else. You can get all kinds of interesting uh, motion in the sound using just this simple pulse width mod and a little LFO action. Next up I want to talk about ring modulation or ring mod for short. Now ring mod is something that's usually done with analog synthesizers that causes certain harmonics to ring out and combine and cancel in weird ways. It's kind of beyond the scope of what we want to try to explain in this video. But what's useful to know is that ring mod is really good for creating sounds that have a lot of odd harmonics that don't necessarily sound really pretty. And that's really good for making things like bell sounds and clarinets. They have a lot of odd harmonics. So when I say odd harmonics, I don't mean odd like, gee, that's weird. I mean odd in the harmonic series if you actually look at the math behind a sound in the waveforms. And that's just on a sine wave which doesn't have a lot of harmonics, so let's go to something a little more complex. It 
If you're familiar with the sound of the PPG digital synthesizers from the 80s, uh, the ring mod knob will get you really close to those types of sounds, those sort of complex digital sounds. Now you might notice that if you're on any oscillator other than oscillator 1, the ring mod knob becomes an FM knob. And here we can see on oscillator 3, same thing, FM. Now, the FM knob will not allow you to tune in your favorite rock and roll stations, but it does let you modulate one oscillator with one of the other oscillators, and essentially really what it's doing is it's vibratoing one with the other. If you can imagine that, like if I use this sine wave to modulate oscillator one, it's essentially just adding like an organ vibrato that goes but it sounds really unique because it's doing in the audio range. It's not doing it really slowly, like I just hummed. It's going super fast. So you end up getting what they call sidebands, and that creates a lot of interesting harmonics. So with two simple sine waves going on oscillator one and oscillator two, I'm going to show you what happens. As I turn it up, now you can hear a little noise in there, but you've got this stacked up in a patch with other oscillators and effects and stuff. It's not that noticeable. And this is just using sine waves, so let me use some other waveforms. Turn that down a little bit. Now that sounds really cool when I move the knob with my mouse, but what would be a lot cooler is if I could use the modulation matrix to automatically move the knob for me. Holy moly, that's cool, right? You can do that with a uh, square wave. That is a whole lot of sound without a whole lot of effort, right? So there's plenty of fun and timbral exploration madness to be had using the FM knobs. The last oscillator feature I want to talk about is sync. Now, if you've heard uh, No Doubt's Just a Girl, or going back a little further, The Cars Let's Go, it's that kind of tearing sound, and you can easily make it on Nightlife using sync. And the way it works is one oscillator acts as a master, and one or two of the other ones can act as a slave that sort of sync to the other oscillator, as it were, and it gives that sound when you sweep the pitch. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, we're on oscillator one right now, and if you look over here, you can see where it says sync. There's nothing here. I'm clicking. And if you go to oscillator two over here, we've got an on-off, and same deal with oscillator three. So for right now, I'm going to turn on oscillator two by clicking over here. So now we have oscillator one and two. And I've set up a modulation routing up here in the matrix. I've selected envelope 3. Remember to click over here if you want to use envelope 3. It has a tabbed system, just like the oscillators do. And I've set envelope 3 to uh, medium attack and medium decay. I've turned sustain all the way off. That way it goes up and down. And then over here in the modulation destination, I've selected pitch 2. This means that the envelope is going to modulate the pitch of oscillator 2. So let's, let's have a listen to what that sounds like. I'm going to go and turn off oscillator 1. And now we just have oscillator 2 on and sync is off and it sounds like this. Well that isn't very cool, right? So <laughs> let's go back and turn on sync. Now we can hear that sweep sound. And I can even turn it up more here. And that sweeping sound is really just coming from oscillator 2. We don't even need to hear oscillator 1. So I'm going to click on oscillator 1, and I'm going to take its volume over here and turn it off because it's not really contributing to that sweep. Now we just have the sweep. And depending on which waveforms you use, it'll affect the sounds differently. And of course, you can do these at any speed you like. The important thing to know about sync sounds is it will definitely take some experimenting with the octave controls and the tuning. If I'm on oscillator 2 over here, some settings won't even sound like they're sweeping much at all. So you have to mess with them. Sometimes it's too much like that. And the same with oscillator 1. This will set the actual range it's playing in. So remember to experiment with the octave settings a lot and the depth of the sweep over here, and the attack and decay controls.